revenue is vanity and profit is sanity, but cash is king. There's a book that I would really recommend. It's a guy by the name Greg Crabtree, and it's called Simple Numbers, Straight Talk, Big Profits. During this downtime, if you've got time to order it off of Amazon or get it on Kindle or whatever, his big deal is revenues is uh, don't really matter. It's it's what and and profits good, but really cash, and it's really important in times like these. And the deal is you should have two months of cash reserves of operating expenses. And most firms don't, to be honest. And I can say that I didn't have it for many, many years. So then the question comes to, well, what are you going to do if you don't have two months of cash reserves for operating expenses? The first reaction most people have is a knee jerk reaction is to cut all marketing, uh, lay off a bunch of people, turn inward, and just freeze like a deer with its uh, headlights, uh, with, with its eyes in the headlights. But here's what you should be doing. I think you should be looking at your marketing, and if you know your numbers, you should be looking at what's effective. And look at it, like I said earlier, on a weekly basis. But I would say cut like 50%, and it depends on what kind of practice. Uh, you know, like uh, Seth was talking about, you know, criminals just dried up. But with like PI, they're still getting cases. Uh, I heard somebody said the uh, domestic still getting cases. Uh, then I, I saw a question on there about uh, wheels and how can you do wheels. Um, I think, you know, because uh, you got to have a notary and witnesses and everything. I don't see why you can't set it up and do Zoom and just have people go to different rooms and uh, and, and watch them do it and then bring the have somebody just bring the papers around. Uh, so that would be the way I would do it. I mean, nobody told me that. I was just thinking logically that's the way I would do it. Um, just set it up with your computers and Zoom and they can watch them. The witness can watch the person sign and that would have to be in the room or they can watch them sign. If you got glass in your uh, conference room, you could do it that way. But anyway, so, you know, it goes to depend on your practice. But I think the big deal is, is don't, like I said earlier, don't go about just, wholesaling cutting your people because it you they've got a lot of intellectual capital uh and they've got uh, it took you a long time to find them and if they're really good people you want to hold on to them because as i said earlier this will pass and the deal is you got the and there goes somebody else going to talk about this you got to rise to occasion to be a leader and i think other things you can do is go through your line items by line item and see what generating revenue and if it's not then suspend it uh, I thought Seth's idea of uh, casting all the credit cards and getting new ones was a pretty good idea. I thought that was pretty good and, and changing. Uh, I hadn't done that, but I think it's a good idea. And then I would just be, here's another way that you can increase your cash flow. You could just start, if you've been paying things in, you know, 30 days, just start paying them in 60 days and go ahead and call or write your vendors and say, here's the deal. We're all in this together. And for me to continue to be your customer, uh, you know, I'm going to need to push this out so I can keep my business afloat. And, uh, you know, what are they going to do? Sue you because the courts are closed. <laughs> I mean, really think about it. Um, you know, but I think the deal is what I've always seen, cause I've been in times when things were rough. When I first started, I was like this and PI firms tend to be like this. It's either feast or famine. Uh, I just would always call up the vendors and tell you, here's the deal. And most 95% of the vendors will work with you because they'd rather keep you as a long time customer client than to lose you. Uh, and there are going to be some people that don't care. Uh, those are probably people you don't want to deal with in the future anyway. So don't worry about it. Um, then I think, uh, as I said, only lay off people that can't work remotely. Uh, and I would consider if you can go remote, do it. And uh, Jay, uh, Seth had some, do, uh, he had a software he was talking about. Another one is log me in. Uh, your phones, you know, um, if you've got voice over internet phones, you can have those forwarded. If you don't, you can have some, your, your line, you can call your landline company and have them forwarded to somebody. And then just set up callback times uh, where you, um, say these five employees or however many you got, if you got a big staff, they'll call you back between three and four, four and five or two and three. And that way they know it. And, and it can just handle that all with the emails or Slack or whatever. Um, then I think 
the big deal. So these are some ways that you can can deal with cash. But then here's another deal. And I'm actually, as soon as I get off of this, I'm hosting a webinar over on Pilma uh, about SBA loans. And it's not been passed yet, but I would tell you this: you you need to. There's going to be over 300 billion dollars where there's usually only 30 billion dollars in the SBA loan program. So and it's going to apply to so lows to anybody. And the disaster loans are not going to be as the underwriting is going to be hardly nothing. Um, so the deal is, uh, I will tell you this, you need to go ahead and start uh, figuring out what your average monthly payroll is for the last 12 months, what your average rent payments are for the last 12 months, any other kind of debts, whether it be a mortgage on your building or any kind of bank loans, company car payments, leased equipment, get that all together and have it ready because when this passes, uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunity, but it's going to be first come first serve. And there is going to be 300 billion, but I think it'll run out. There was a fighter pilot in world war two named John Boyd, and he was the best. He was the ace, uh, the generals and stuff didn't like him because he was a renegade, but he had this, but the people asked him about his secrets and his secret was he had, he called, well, he had called the Uda loop uh, system and so he always was smarter than the other pilots and he always when they had the dog fights or the simulators he would always beat them like within five to ten seconds but it was Uda it was a, observe your environment with no bias orient yourself to where you're at how do I fit in and then decision what is my strategy what's my next step and then a act action so since I didn't have any, uh, any, uh, I'm going to put this up there. So can y'all see that? Yeah. So anyway, that is where you need to be thinking about this whole coronavirus. You need to observe each week. I think you need to relook at it and see where you're at, what, it, what the environment is and then orient yourself and see how am I going to fit in and then what's going to be my strategy and then what action am I going to take. And um, I think if you do this uh, and keep everybody calm and I'm not going to talk a lot about leadership, but I think the big deal is uh, everybody's going to go back, going to go off your lead. And the deal is you need to keep everybody calm. And, um, you know, I see it as a time to give. And I think Jay, was just on point. Uh, I think uh, uh, Bill's on point. Create these things that you can help the community. And, uh, you know, that's what we're doing at Pilma. I mean, the Powerful Innovative Legal Marketing Management Association. We're, we've set up this coronavirus uh, kit, survival kit. It's free to anybody, not just members. Uh, my members, I'm call, I'm doing a, a a Zoom video meeting every afternoon uh, with the different, I got five different masterminds and we're doing each one of those. And then I'm doing my regular members uh, each week. So we're doing that. And, and the things that you could do is like, no matter what it is, if you can just look at the policy or get somebody on this business interruption, that's going to be a public service. Maybe people when they're getting sick. Maybe they, they need some uh, living wills or some health power of attorneys or whatever. I mean, whatever you can do to give back the community, and I think push it out through uh, social media is going to be a way to save cash, but also to, you know, really build your brand and, and uh, it'll pay off long-term dividends is what I say. And, and, I, and here's the last thing I'll say. I think this is a great time to catch up and clean up. And what I mean by that is, uh, like Jay was saying, uh, be a great time to work on your processes, any kind of projects that you've been putting behind because you just didn't have time, you were too busy. Now is a great time to do it, whatever it might be, going paperless, different phone system, whatever. And this is also a great time to work on your strategy uh, for how you are going to uh, pulverize your competition uh, when this all breaks loose. Uh, instead of, uh, you know, you got to be concerned with now and I say, look at it weekly, but, but the deal is you need to be thinking about the future. Always be thinking that great leaders, great business people 
are always looking down the road. You know, they're never just looking at what's here now. And I think the deal is you need to look at uh, what what is going to be your, your breakout or something, you know, that you can really stand apart from all your competition. Uh, what kind of programs can you do? What kind of promotions can you do to really push out when all this is over with or when it's on the down downswing? So, you know, um, big deal is, you know, cut expenses, uh, try to hold on to your key employees, uh, line item by line item. If it don't, if it don't produce income, if it don't generate revenue, suspend it and uh, look into these loans. Cause I got a feeling that a lot of these loans are going to be easy to get. And I got a feeling that if you don't fire, you know, more than 10% of your staff, that you're probably going to get a forgiveness on them. I really do. Now, we don't know for sure because there's the fact they might have passed it while we're doing this webinar, but I know they're negotiating and they're trying to take a boat on it again. And I know that Schumer has finally is making some progress overnight uh, with the Republicans. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I think the now the time is, is don't panic, stay the course and think about giving, giving plus, what are you going to do in the future when this thing falls, you know, passes over, which it will. That's all I got.